All right, I'm gonna try to fab up these doors, these rear doors, right? Um, these can be a little bit tricky because they can be big and cumbersome. So what I've got, I measured 27 and a half inches from, from out there to where I'm gonna put it on the middle, 27 and a half inches from each side, right? And what I've got here is the same thing I've used everywhere else. Okay, this is, this is this four inch on center, rough sawed look, but I've taken them and I've backed them up. To, this is two pieces that I glued together. All right, use wood glue, put it all over them and uh, clamped them down, let them sit for 24 hours and uh, that's glued together. So now um, I've actually got two pieces of this, two pieces of four by eight. It's overkill, but what's downside is that this, you know, if this was, if these were 24 inches, I could just use, you know, one piece and split it down the middle. It's 27 and a half, so I've got to double the amount of wood. So to frame out this rear door, or to, to cut it all out, I need 27 and a half inches that way, right? And the height, I need to be 75 inches. 75 inches, all right? That's what the height I need it to be. So I can go ahead and mark this out since I've got it here. This is not fitting in any kind of super tight quarters. So you don't gotta be, you know, super, super exact. puts me at 27 and a half. So I can just measure down there and see if I'm gonna be the same. If I'm gonna be the same, that makes life easier as far as measuring and all that. Yep, so I'll just follow that. All right, good deal. That makes life easy. Anything that makes life easy, I like. <laughs> Because a lot of this stuff ends up being very difficult. All right. So you just want to adjust everything so that you're not going to be um, you don't want to cut you don't want to cut your support boards. So I'm gonna have to move them around. that one. The only reason why I got it supported is so that I don't cut through um, the board that I'm using as my work surface. Double check as to which um, seam I'm going to be ripping this down. That's going to be this one right here. So. All I'll do, and I'll start ripping it. You'll see it's a pretty easy process. I need to reposition myself.
can be a little tricky to go over these grooves with your old pencil. But inside that mark um, and cut and trim that up um, let me I might be able to mark it right here All right. this door off and I'll use a jigsaw to actually cut that. So what I've got is this. I'm gonna make a mark, I don't know, eighth of an inch or so inside that. Alright, so I'm going to cut along that inside one. What I've got is, is my jigsaw. And I've got a DeWalt. This is a scrolling wood blade. Alright, that's what I've got on there. It allows you to make turn. I mean, you don't have to use that because this is not that sharp of a turn. It's a good idea. How's that going? up there 
what I will come back to do, do is, you know, I'll sand this all up, get it all nice and pretty, especially when I put the trim on. As you can see, uh, one before trim will come up here. We'll have a piece of one before, maybe one by six that I'll sand down in order to make this curve. Um, and one before here. And it will look, uh, it'll look, it'll look amazing when this is all said and done. It really will. Well, guys, I got my hinges laid out for this door. To be sure they look complementary to the other door, I'm going to measure out where each hinge goes on this door. All right, it's kind of hard to see the whole picture, but we got a six, thirty-one, and fifty-three-ish. We're looking at six. 31 and 53 ish. All right. So that's mm, might be okay. I'll put it right there. All right. So what this is going to do is make it for the spacing on the hinges on this door are going to look just like or similar the spacing of the hinges on the other door. So now, guys, I got three inch carriage bolts, quarter inch thick, three inch long carriage bolts. Put three of these in each one and then put two wood screws in. So I'll go ahead and drill. What I do, you know, instead of having it out like that, I flop it down so that it's secure against the, against the edge there. And I'm putting the barrel of that hinge right against the edge too, so it'd be a nice flush fit. quarter inch bit so I'm pushing up quarter inch carriage bolts through a quarter inch hole sometimes you might end up with a little bit be a little bit tight and you have to waller it out a little bit it's not that big deal All right. see I got these on so now I'll get Put on some flat washers. And some split washers. Some people call the split washers lock washers. I, I was always growing up knowing them as lock washers, but this company that makes them call them split washers. I mean, it makes sense too. That's a description that makes sense. And then I got some quarter inch hex nuts to put on there. The only reason why, so what I'm doing is I'm going with the hex nuts first. This, so the shaft on these bolts is, these three inch bolts is a little bit long. It's actually about a quarter inch too long. Well, Unless I went to Fast and All or somewhere to order special order some two and three quarter um, bolts, then I've got to make do with the extra. It's not a big deal. This is how I'm going to do each and every one of them. But I can still, because it will be exposed, I'll go ahead and top them off because I'll have that extra thread sticking out with a acorn nut 
which adds a just a, a nice solid finish to it. I make it clean, uh, elegant, if you want to call it that. Look. All I'm doing is I'm holding the head of that hillary bowl as it gets sucked in the wood. And then it'll hold itself. So. I go pretty, pretty solid on there. So there's the finish without an acorn nut. There's the finished look with an acorn nut. See, so yeah, you got thread sticking out, and you got a nice rounded, smooth cap that will also prevent it from snagging on your clothes, ripping your shirt, sleeves, stuff like that. Come with some with wood screws. They actually, come with all wood screws, and I'm not going to do that on all of them. But I am going to put two of them, just because I like the look of the three carry the bolts. So, and these actually are really good quality wood screws that they've included. Now we use them in other projects and future projects. So now I've got that hinge on. I'll give you a close up. There's a close up. So you got my three carriage bolts, my acorn with my acorn nuts on it, got my wood screws in, and then this will go along the edge. So see how clean that looks. See how clean that looks. And then you also got a nice clean look on the outside. Now I'm going to go ahead and secure these other two the exact same way I did that. And then I'll get it, I'll show you getting it mounted on the actual trailer. All right, so I got one of the back doors put on, right? And I fashioned these hinges the exact same way I did the hinges on those front doors. You can see it opens up. I've got one, two, three hinges. All right, now this door is somewhat heavy. So how do I get it in place, right? Well, if you'll notice, this happens to be my template is a cat litter bucket with two two by 12s on or two by 10s on it. Um, so that's what I get, I put it underneath there, supported my door. All right, and then um, I used a level to fashion to be sure it was plumb, and then I secured everything in place, All right? And so I'm gonna do the same thing with this other door. I've got it mounted, I've got it clamped in place, you know, I used a level to check and see if it was plumb, and then I've got it spaced pretty good. Um, at least what seems pretty good on that. Let me double check. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty good. All right, so now what I need to do is I've got these metal screws. Uh, they're flathead, but I'll use the, the hex, uh, you know, fitting on it. I'm going to use a 3 16 bit. And I'm going to drill a pilot hole for these. These are not these ones are not self-tapping. You can get self-tapping screws, but and so I'm going to drill a pilot hole. And try to get at least one screw in each one of these, um, and then I'm going to drill it in there. And I'm going to kind of wall it around a little bit.
So now I've got this hex driver put on there. And I will drive in these, let's see if you can see, these metal screws, okay? things can be cantankerous sometimes for sure. A lot of torque involved in these. Okay. Yeah. That, now I'll try to get one on the bottom. And so it's the same process. Drill a pilot hole, put your screw in there, and then I'll show you the finished work. 